electric current and chemical effect introduction we use electricity in our homes to use different things like fans bulbs heaters doorbells and so on these devices make use of two different effects of electric current that are magnetic effect and heating effect another widely used effect of electric current is its chemical effect in this chapter we will study about the chemical effect of electric current we shall study how electricity can change a substance chemically electric current you know that atom is electrically neutral and is made up of positively and negatively charged particles the positively charged particles called protons are heavy and remain fixed in their position the negatively charged particles called electrons are lighter and free to move about the number of positive and negative charged particles in an atom are equal however when a glass rod is rubbed on a piece of silk some electrons from the glass rod get transferred to the silk cloth thus the glass rod becomes deficient in electrons and acquires a positive charge the silk cloth gains excess electrons and acquires an equal negative charge electric charge can be made to move in a continuous stream or current the movement of electrons constitutes an electric current for electricity to flow we need freely moving electric charges for those solids which are good conductors of electricity the moving charges are a type of particles called electrons in liquids the moving charges are called ions ions are atom or group of atoms with positive or negative charge these ions make it possible for electric current to flow two components are necessary for an electric current to flow firstly a continuous unbroken path or circuit is needed for the current to flow through a switch is inserted in the circuit to make or break the circuit as required secondly we also need a driving force called electromotive force which pushes the electrons that carry the charge around the circuit this force is provided by an electric cell in a circuit direction of electric current electrons flow from a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration this means that electricity flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal however earlier it was believed that the current flows from positive terminal to negative terminal it was felt that positive terminal is at a higher potential so current flows from it to negative terminal which is at lower potential thus it is clear that conventional current flows from positive terminal to the negative one while electron current flows from negative to positive terminal conduction through liquids there are some substances which allow electricity to pass through them while others do not substances which allows electricity to pass through them are called conductors while those which do not allow electric current to pass are called insulators all metals are generally good conductors of electricity substances like air wood plastic are examples of insulators now the question arises whether liquids conduct electricity or not some liquids are good conductors of electricity while some liquids are poor conductors of electricity most liquids that conduct electricity are solutions of acids bases and salts although distilled water is a poor conductor of electricity as it does not have free ions to conduct electricity but when salt is dissolved in it it becomes a good conductor tap water also conducts electricity because tap water is not pure water and has some salts dissolved in it the passage of electric current through a conducting liquid causes chemical reactions the resulting effects are called chemical effects of electric current so far you have used the tester to test electric conductivity in solids let us now use the tester to see if electricity can also pass through liquids while testing liquids you may find that the bulb does not glow as brightly as in case of metals 
This is because the current through liquids is generally weak as liquids are not as good conductors as metals. So, for testing conductivity through liquids, we can use an LED in the circuit instead of a bulb. An LED has two wires attached to it which are called leads. One lead is slightly longer than the other. It must be kept in mind that while connecting to a circuit, the shorter lead is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the longer lead is connected to the positive terminal. It must be ensured that free ends of the lead do not touch each other to make a tester for conductors and insulators. Make an electric circuit consisting of a cell and a bulb connected through insulating copper wire as shown in the figure. Touch the free ends of the wire together for a fraction of second. If the bulb glows, your tester is ready and working. To test whether a given substance is a conductor or insulator, connect it to the two free ends of the conducting wire. If the bulb glows, the substance is a conductor. If it does not glow, the substance is an insulator. Electrolysis It was found by Sir Humphrey Davy that when electric current was passed through certain substances, they undergo a chemical change to give a new substance. This process is called electrolysis. Let us do an activity to see what happens when electric current is passed through water. When electric current passes through a conducting solution, it dissociates the solution. The solution that conducts electricity is called an electrolyte and the process by which an electrolyte is dissociated with the help of electricity is called electrolysis. When an electrolyte is dissolved in water, it breaks up into positively and negatively charged particles called ions. Positively charged ions are called cations while negatively charged ions are called anions. During the passage of electric current through the solution, the cations move towards the negative charged electrode and anion towards the positively charged electrode. This results in a chemical change. To show the conduction of electricity through various liquids. The two free ends of the wires of tester are dipped in different liquids to check whether they conduct electricity or not. If the bulb glows, they conduct electricity, else they do not. Caution! The ends of the wire should be washed and dried before being used again. To demonstrate chemical effect of electric current on water, take two iron nails and wrap one or two rounds of copper wire around them and connect the other ends of the wires to the two terminals of an electric battery. Take water in a beaker and add a little salt or few drops of sulfuric acid to it to make it conducting. Immerse the nails in the solution which will now behave as electrode. You will find small bubbles of gases coming out from the water near the nails. The gases evolved are hydrogen and oxygen because electric current breaks water into its constituent gases hydrogen and oxygen. It shows that electric current has chemical effect on water. Electroplating Electroplating is an application of electrolysis. In the process of electroplating, a thin layer of metal, generally an expensive one, is coated on an inferior quality metal. Some common electroplated articles are jewellery, chromium-plated motorcycle handlebars, tin-plated cans, etc. Electroplating is done to protect the metal from corrosion or to make its look attractive. For electroplating, the metal to be electroplated is connected to the anode. An article on which a thin metal coating is to be applied is connected to the cathode. The electrolyte should be a solution of a salt of the metal. Electroplating is widely used in industry for coating metal objects with a thin layer of a different metal. The layer of metal deposited has some desired property which the metal of the objects lack. For example, chromium plating is done on many objects such as car parts, bath taps, kitchen gas burners, 
bicycle handlebars, wheels, rims and others. Chromium has a shiny appearance. It does not corrode. It resists scratches. However, chromium is expensive and it may not be economical to make the whole object out of chromium. So, the object is made from cheaper metal and only a coating of chromium over it is deposited. Jewelry makers electroplate gold and silver on less expensive metals. These ornaments have the appearance of silver or gold but are much less expensive. Tin cans used for storing food are made by electroplating tin on iron. This process is known as tinning. Thus, food does not come in contact with iron and is protected from getting spoiled. Iron is used in bridges and automobiles to provide strength. However, iron tends to corrode and rust. So, a coating of zinc is deposited on iron to protect it from corrosion and formation of rust. This is known as galvanization to show that pure water does not conduct electricity. Take three small pieces of copper wire, a dry cell, a bulb and some distilled water in a beaker. Connect the bare ends of the copper wire A, B and C through the bulb and cell as shown in the figure. Now, dip the two bare ends of the wires B and C in distilled water in the beaker. You will observe that the bulb does not glow. It proves that pure water does not conduct electricity. Now, add some common salt to the distilled water. Dissolve the common salt by stirring with glass rod. When the conducting wire is dipped in this solution, the bulb lights up. It clearly proves that the addition of salt makes distilled water a good conductor of electricity. This activity can be repeated using acids or alkalis instead of salts. You will find that addition of alkalis or acids makes the distilled water a conductor of electricity. So, we can say that most liquids which conduct electricity are solutions of acids, bases and salts. To show electroplating of copper, take a glass beaker, thick copper wire, a metal spoon, battery, copper sulphate solution and copper wires. Fill the beaker with copper sulphate solution. Hammer the copper wire to flatten it out and connect the copper wire with the positive terminal of the battery. Connect the spoon through a switch to the negative terminal of the battery. Dip both of them in the beaker containing copper sulphate solution, making sure that they do not touch each other. Put on the switch and let the current pass through the solution. After an hour or so, you will see that a layer of copper gets deposited on the spoon.